Hi everyone, it's Miriam with a Y. This video is part two and picks up right where we left off in part one. So go watch that if you haven't seen it yet or a lot of things in this video will really not make sense. There's a link in the description box below to part one and also in the top right corner, assuming your device lets you see that. Okay, here we go. I'm burnishing to really get this color well pressed into the double-sided adhesive, <laughs> the sticky. <laughs> And what's interesting too is it feels like velvet. Like you'd think it would feel like sandpaper. No, it really feels like velvet. And one of the women that I spoke to when I called to ask questions told me that. And I remember thinking, yeah, velvet, sure. Okay, she's right. It feels like velvet. A little more brushing of the extra. Now I'm taking my baby wipe because I don't have a Swiffer and wiping off the surrounding area. See, and it does a really good job of picking it up. And I'm doing this so that I don't contaminate the area that needs to be green with any of this blue. Now I'm going to pull off the lace. Oh, this stuff is um, non-stick on both sides so it doesn't matter which side you put down so if, if you go this way it's fine that's just so i can hold on here without putting my fingers in the sticky part i am just blown away i almost want to leave it just like that but it's sticky so i've committed to the green oh. Let it fall. Like, it got in some places, but in some places I didn't get coverage. So. Until I get a better hang of this, I'm better off just pouring the whole jar out. I don't care, because I'm just going to put it back in there anyway. Oh, I just can't get over this. It's like, I, it's like I'm looking at it and I just don't understand, you know? <laughs> no, burnish. It's so soft. It's, it's, oh. <laughs> I just want to play with this. It's like I almost don't want to put resin on it because I just want to be able to touch this stuff. And when you burnish it, it gets shinier. I don't know if it's showing up on camera, but it's really obvious to me. It's much shinier after you burnish it. So I'm guessing the reason for that is that when the flakes of the glitter land on the tape, some of them are probably standing on their sides. And then when you burnish them, you're laying them down. So that is probably what makes it end up feeling so smooth and so shiny. I'm gonna have to do this in every single color combination. Now I want every single color they make. When I was picking colors, I was thinking, you know, I don't have enough because I wanted like a pale blue. I don't have one of those. I wanted a pink. I don't have one of those, but they do. So <laughs> I'm going to have to order more. Okay, I might have a problem. <laughs> I might have a new little addiction. Just a little. I kind of liked the way Midnight Blue looked with the sort of tan lacy look when we when I first peeled it off so I'm gonna use these two colors now I'm gonna use that midnight blue and the sand dunes from the first coaster and then do this because I want to see what two very unrelated colors look like when they're together because as pretty as I think this is I think that some of the detail will be more apparent if the color of the lace is totally different. This is, I mean, it's not like this the same color, but they're related. So this is for science. It's not that I have a problem. <laughs> it's 
just that I come on it. I'm gonna want to do this all night. It's really bad. But I am gonna get her whole Swiffer setup thing and do that for sure. See, and next time I'm gonna want to do the light color as the background and the dark color as the lace. And uh, there are so many combinations. I, I I don't even know what to do with myself here. the excess. I don't know if it's important which order you do this in. Like I think before I brushed off first and then burnished and now this time I burnished first and now I'm brushing. I don't know if it makes a difference. I'll have to do some testing to see if it looks different based on which I do first. Now see this was the only lace that Joanne had that was big enough for this but if you guys know where I can get lace, because clearly I'm going to need lots of different types of lace. And I have no idea where to get lace. We used to have a fabric store by me called Hancock Fabrics, but that's gone. So I'm guessing you can get it online, but I'm not sure where. Now for sand dunes, both of these colors are in the beach box. Now this I'm not going to want to recover because there might be some blue mixed in there and I don't want to put that back in the jar. What I might do though is start a jar of shiny mix. <laughs> I don't know what I would do with it, but you never know. Look at the detail that gets caught. I mean, can you see that? Every little line. Yeah, look how different these are. The background color is the same, but they're so really different. Okay, let's do the resin. For my resin, I'm going to use my favorite ClearCast 7050. I want a resin that's going to cure rock hard, be scratch resistant, and have a super shiny finish to really highlight this beautiful glitter. I think the marriage of these two is going to be lovely. I also want something that's going to cure fairly quickly because I'm really impatient and I can't <laughs> wait to see this and be able to pick them up. So that's another reason I love this resin. Um, I need about an ounce for this because these are 4x4 four four coasters. So 4 times 4 is 16. I have two of them. That's 32. So that's 32 milliliters of resin that I would want. An ounce is 30 milliliters. I probably can get by with an ounce. So that's what I'm going to mix up. Since ClearCast is a 2 to 1 ratio resin, I'll be mixing 20 milliliters of part A, the resin, and 10 milliliters of part B, the hardener. Now I'm going to let my resin sit for a couple of minutes to let some of the bubbles have a chance to rise and pop on their own. My resin has degassed quite a bit. Double checking that these guys are level and I am good to go. Now I suspect that these might look darker after we add some resin. Let's see if that's true. Yeah, for me, they look darker, at least from my angle. I haven't decided if I want this to run off the edge or not yet. Something else I've just thought about while spreading this. If this was regular glitter, I would get a ton of micro bubbles in between flakes of glitter. But because this is so fine and so press down, there is no place for that to happen. So I'm going to be pretty okay. So what I decided to do, rather than just let the resin run off the edge, is I'm coating the edge with my popsicle stick just to give the edge an extra shine and protect them. So coating them gives it a nice even look without the mess of resin running over the edge because that can just get 
sticky and unnecessary. I'm only coating two of them. I want to leave the third one as a control to sort of look to see if there's a change of glistening. Is it less glisteny under resin, more glisteny under resin, that sort of thing. I think I've gotten a good even coat on both of them and coated the sides well. So I'm just going to hit both of them with the torch to pop any surface bubbles and then put these to bed. I think that's that. See you later. Okay, these are just gorgeous. Clear cast finish just never disappoints me. And the elegant look of this silk microfine glitter, it's my new favorite thing. Thank you, Elizabeth Craft Designs, for having such a cool product. Oh my gosh. You can all find these glitters on Amazon too, but the colors are much easier to pick on the Elizabeth Craft Designs website. I made an easy to remember link to help all of you get straight to the page of glitter. bit.ly slash EC glitter for Elizabeth Craft glitter. For the adhesive, the link is bit.ly slash EC adhesive. Now those links and more are in the description box below the video too. I've come to know you, my lovely viewers, and I suspect that many of you are going to ask me in the comments, can you use regular fine glitter for this? I tried it while I was waiting for the resin to cure, and the result was uh, blurry at best. The glitter wouldn't burnish well. It, it looked kind of sort of like it wanted to do it, but nothing like what this glitter can do. I'm not going to elaborate too much more about that because this is the type of question that sometimes you guys ask, but I encourage you to answer for yourself. My answering questions like that makes you miss out on the opportunity to experiment. A lot of what I've learned over the years has come by trying things that failed or just worked weird or whatever. But in those attempts, I learned things. Something about failure and mishaps might lead to happy accidents that you'll miss out on if you don't try things for yourself. You know that I'm happy to tell you things. If I know it, I'm happy to tell you. But I also want to help you become adventurous and curious and to take risks. Your art will thank you for it. This awesome glitter has given me great embellishing ideas. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of those. Some of those detailed tutorials will be Patreon exclusives, so consider becoming a patron by going to this address. I don't want you to miss out. If you'd like to help my channel continue, please click on any of my links to get you to Amazon. If you do it right before completing any purchase on that site, I get a little credit, and I kind of need that. <laughs> Let me know in the comments what you think of this glitter and its possibilities. What ideas are popping up for you? What colors do you want? <laughs> I kind of want them all. Give me a quick thumbs up if you're excited about this, and please share this with your glitter, resin, and coaster-loving friends. Thank you for watching. You guys are why I do this. See you in a few days. Bye now.